Warning. The following video explains how to perform a game-breaking exploit in the video game World of Warcraft. Players who break the rules and harass or threaten other players may be banned, suspended, or invited to join Activision Blizzard's board of directors. Hello, and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks, with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. So, a while back I made this video which outlined a method to become completely invincible in World of Warcraft. This method involved being invited to scenarios by a secondary player or secondary account character, allowing the primary player to get out of combat instantly and amazingly bypass death mechanics altogether. With their usual cat-like reflexes, Blizzard leaped into action by doing nothing at all, and somehow in patch 9.15, they've made the issue significantly worse. Allowing players to not only become invincible, but also one-shot other players. But first, a quick word from my sponsor, Raid Shadow Legend. Okay, no, it's my patron. Where exploits too hot for YouTube get published on a regular basis, such as this amazing trick to instantly complete a Night Fae calling, generating thousands of gold in seconds. So what happened is that Blizzard introduced solo queues for the island expeditions from Battle for Azeroth. Which was an interesting idea, except that Blizzard did their usual thing of making a promising change rubbish by badly overtuning it and making it impractical as a method of levelling. But, from the point of view of an exploiter, the introduction of solo island expeditions is wonderful, because it has added yet more broken content to mess up the game even more than it was already. First, let's establish how you actually run a solo island expedition. To run a solo island expedition for Alliance, go to Borellus Harbour and find Flynn Fairwind at this location. Horde need to go to Dazaralor Harbour in Zandalar and seek out Captain Rezo Kun. You must click on the NPC, not the table in front of them. Those only offer the old three-man island expeditions. For some Alliance players, Finn Fairwind is not there. This is because you need to complete the introductory quests, taking you up to your first quest in Tirograd Sound to get Flynn to appear at the harbour. There's a video by Krak and Latte which explains exactly what to do if this happens to you, which I'll link to in the description below. Island expeditions are essentially scenarios, so as with Mists of Pandaria scenarios, they can be used to escape combat completely and avoid death mechanics by simply having someone within the scenario, in this case the island expedition, invite your character. But there's an additional property of island expeditions which will allow virtually all classes to one-shot players in-world, as if being immune to death wasn't enough by itself. You see, most monsters in Island Expeditions have a chance to drop an Azerite Globule, which increases the player's damage by 30% and their HP by 20%. For some reason, this is counted as a debuff rather than a buff, and that means that it can be taken out of the scenario and used to kill something. You see, the way buffs and debuffs in World of Warcraft generally work by default is this. The buffs generally can't be taken through loading screens, because Blizzard are aware of the exploitation potential of doing so. However, debuffs, because they're considered to be negative technically, can often be taken through loading screens. Which means that if you get a debuff which has positive characteristics, as in this case, then you potentially have something very interesting. So, the steps here are 1. Player 1 joins Island Expedition in Boralus. 2. Player 1 invites Player 2 to a group. 3. Player 2 will then be transported to the Island Expedition wherever they were initially. 4. Player 2 kills something and gets an Azerite Globule. Or multiple Azerite Globules. 5. Player 2 leaves the group and uses the powerful debuff from the Azerite to kill something. And 6. Repeat from 2 onward. 
Note that while a 30% damage increase is huge, don't ignore the value of the 20% HP increase, as a lot of damage dealing abilities are based on player health nowadays in modern WoW. The debuff does not stack damage above the initial 30%, but it does stack duration. If you can get three gobbles up at once, for example, you get over 50 seconds worth of extra damage and HP. This is quite a big deal given the limited time frame you've got to operate in. Note that I've turned the graphics settings down to an absolute minimum for this video. That's because you don't want to lose any of the debuff's duration during the loading screen than absolutely necessary. Stealth or invisibility persist through the loading screen. This can be important because enemy players will tend to catch on to what you are doing after a while and start camping the spot you materialize at. Now, mostly I just use this for casual slaughter, but it is useful for competing objectives, especially PvP objectives, in war mode in Corthia and the Moor. Aside from the enhanced burst, it has some application in PvE also, as you can get out of combat very easily with it. You can even take this into mythic dungeons, though the brief duration of the debuff means you can only use it for a short boost of 30 seconds or so at best. There is actually a way classes with pets or minions can store this buff and use it in mythics, raids or arena combat. I'm not going to spell it out here and make it too easy for Blizzard. I'll be publishing that on my Patreon, though for those who can't afford it, you may well be able to figure it out. Despite the moronic attempt at humour at the start of this video, you are not very likely to get banned using this method, unless you do something like camp the auction house and trigger multiple player reports. I mean, that would be really dumb. If you like this video, then well, like it. And if you disliked it, then... Uh, uh, I don't know, leave an unhelpful mean comment or something. Actually, don't do that because I think all that does is boost the video in recommendations because expressing your hatred of a video tells YouTube you are socially engaged with it or something ridiculous. I have no idea what's going on with YouTube these days. It's all a bit weird. Thanks for watching. This has been Archfelder.